Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday worship at St. James House of Prayer Episcopal Church in Tampa, Florida. Whether you are here in our building or whether you are online worshiping with us, we are blessed by your presence. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Christmas, as I'm sure you know, is right around the corner. And on Christmas Eve here at St. James House of Prayer, we will have a very special Christmas Eve service in the field across from the church. Uh, a drive-in service, that is to say, you will drive your cars onto the field and have someone assist you in parking so that you will be socially distanced. And you are welcome to bring lawn chairs as long as when you are sitting in them, uh, you can also reach out and touch your car to maintain the social distancing. Looking forward to a wonderful service. Do pray for good weather. And uh, so that will be our Christmas celebration. And then, of course, next Sunday, we continue the 12 days of Christmas, which begins on Christmas Day, not before it. And, uh, and there will be two Sundays to celebrate Christmas season this year. Our bulletin, of course, is online, along with our music insert. And we begin our worship with our opening hymn. If you're in the building, please stand. Holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. from 2 Samuel. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of Seir, but the ark of God stays in the tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be the prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you whenever, wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall read portions of Psalm 89 in unison. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him, and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, 
is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. told that one day in heaven, Jesus approached St. Peter, who, acting in his role as admissions officer, was sitting at the pearly gates. Jesus pointed out that many of the people Peter was admitting into heaven these days were of significantly questionable reputation. Peter responded, I know, Lord, but what am I supposed to do? They come to me here, and I turn them away. So they go around to the back door and talk to your mother, and she lets them in. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that in Advent, the clock runs backwards? On the first Sunday, we focus on the hope of the final Advent, when the Lord will return in glory and reveal the ultimate truth of God to the whole creation, the living and the dead. On the two middle Sundays, John the Baptizer takes center stage as the one whose ministry precedes that of his cousin Jesus, and he points to him as the world's hope. And on the fourth Sunday today, our attention is turned to the way God chose to bring all the rest of it to pass. Through a young teenage girl named Miriam, or in the Greek, Mary. And if we include today's Old Testament reading, we go back even farther to God's promise to King David of Israel that his house, his descendants, would rule forever. A promise fulfilled in Jesus, who through Joseph was of that same house of David. Now, it seems to me, and it's been said before, that our whole life is like that. As the old saying goes, Life must be lived forwards, but is understood backwards. Now be honest. Did you see most of the greatest blessings of your life before they happened? Or even while they were happening? And looking back, how close had you come, sometimes, to making a different choice? One that would not have brought that same blessing into your life. Although Luke's story of the Annunciation compresses the account into a few short sentences, I can't help but believe that there were, at the very least, some long pauses, we could call them pregnant pauses, I suppose, while Mary tried to make sense of what was happening to her in this moment. After all, it's hard to have a calm, reasoned conversation with a visiting angel, no matter how often the words, do not be afraid, are repeated. And the first word she speaks, how can this be, since I am a virgin? Her protest was about more than sex, of course. Mary is you and me and all humanity through whom God decides to be born into the world. All of us are incapable of giving birth to God. It is literally and figuratively impossible. When it comes to this birth, this idea of God being born within us, we are all virgins. And we all have our reasons why God can't be born into the world through us. 
Maybe it's because we're not really very religious, or maybe we have a secret sin. We aren't brave. Maybe we aren't in good health, physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. We're not influential or wealthy. We aren't the kind of person God would want. We're just plain inadequate. But the angel isn't worried. Nothing will be impossible with God, Gabriel says. Now, we might think it's impossible to believe that God could or would want to be born into the world through incomplete and flawed beings like us. But the angel knows that God can be born, born anywhere God decides to be born. Some Christians believe that God can only be born into the world through a virgin. That because all of the other human beings, the ones born through normal biology like we are, are sinful, that the Son of God would have to be born in this special non-biological way so that he wouldn't be tainted. But that's not the reason why the church claims that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. It's not really about biology or about sexual purity at all. What we're expressing is that God intentionally chooses the impossible places to be born into our lives and into our world. So if Christmas is about celebrating God's greatest gift to the world, and if Advent is about preparing ourselves to receive that gift once again, maybe we should be asking, where are the places in our lives we think it would be impossible for God to enter and be born? Here are a few possibilities. For many of us, the place of impossibility is the mistakes of our past. We've done things we are not proud of. Not just things that nobody else would think are important or could even remember, but bigger things. Maybe greed or betrayal, or just plain selfishness. Things that have deeply wounded relationships, maybe even wounds that a death seems to have made impossible to heal. But the reason God sent his son to us was to redeem the mistakes of our past, and to assure us that even death can be a place of healing and hope rather than only grief and despair. And even Mary, although she was young, had not lived a sinless life. That's not why she had found favor with God. For others, the place of impossibility is fear. Many, maybe most, maybe even in some ways all of us are facing hard times, and even more are facing uncertain times. This past week, Sonia and I visited a teacher colleague of hers through whose neighborhood a tornado had gone in Pinellas Park. Her home was fortunate in that a gazebo and a shed in the backyard had been picked up and moved several houses down the street, but her home itself, except for the screens being blown out of the windows, was not damaged. However, as we approached her house, we were surrounded by utility trucks dealing with snapped telephone poles and even homes that were heavily damaged. It was easy to see how in a moment something could happen that would make fear a very real thing. And that, of course, is to say nothing about COVID, which has produced a level of fear throughout our world and certainly in our own communities as the numbers continue to climb that might be unprecedented at least for years back. And it isn't most fear, the fear of the unknown. We talk about the fear of death, but even that is a fear of the unknown if we are afraid of death more than it is death itself. In our culture, we are often led to believe that we can control our lives, our health, our resources, our careers, our relationships, and perhaps 
we have more control over our lives, or at least more ability to have influence in various parts of our lives than any generation before us. But the truth is that we aren't in control of many of the circumstances of our lives. What we do control is how we respond to hard times and the uncertain times. Mary could certainly guess some of the difficulties that would arise when she turned up pregnant, and there were many others she couldn't even begin to guess. Thirty or so years later, she would watch her son hanging on a cross. She was certainly afraid, both because of the presence of the archangel and by his words to her. But that wasn't why she had found favor with God either. And for others of us, the place of impossibility is a sense of inadequacy. I don't read my Bible often enough, or pray enough, or go to church enough. Why would God bother to be born in me? The answer is simple. Because you and I are God's creation. And having created us, God wants us to know him, to love him, and to serve him. And to help others to do the same. God does have tasks for each of us to do, things that, are, that we are in a unique place to do. Mary probably wasn't really much different from any other Jewish girl in her village. She only knew as much of the Torah as she could pick up from her father or her older brothers, since she wasn't allowed in the synagogue and certainly couldn't read. That wasn't why she had found favor with God either. So why had Mary found favor with God? Why was she chosen to be the most blessed woman in human history? Chances are that Mary had some skeletons in her closet, although they may have been small. She was no stranger to fear, and she would have laughed if anyone had suggested that God might choose her for a special task, particularly a monumental one. Luke doesn't exactly tell us why God had chosen Mary, but we do see the response that shows us that it was the right choice. Mary says, paraphrasing, this still sounds impossible, but after all, I belong to God. I don't deserve this honor, but if God chooses to give it, I will accept it and carry whatever joys or burdens the circumstances may bring. Here we are at the threshold of another Christmas. May each of us open to God those places that we think it would be impossible for God to be born, places of regret or guilt, places of fear or lack of control, places of inadequacy or intimidation. For nothing will be impossible with God if we allow his grace to be born and grow in us. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit 
he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayer for the People for the Fourth Sunday of Advent Rejoicing with Mary that the Word comes among us, let us offer to God our prayers, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. May we find in Mary, the servant of the Lord, the model of our heart's willing surrender to God's call. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we discover in true spiritual virginity the richness of God, of what God alone can do to make Christ come alive in Mary, in us, and in all the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May the God of mystery who dwells in unapproachable light draw us more and more deeply into the path of divine wisdom beyond all human expectation. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May our assembly of disciples be a womb and a place for the shaping of Christ by God's power, so that we may give birth to Christ from the womb of our community for the sake of the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May our deepest hearts find strength in the gift of blessed hope that what God has begun to do in our world and in each of us by God's saving work will be brought to its fullness by our Savior. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May we remember before God all who are in need and who cry for the presence of God. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all our needs and thanksgivings. For the leaders of the church, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daphne, our bishop, Steve, our priest, Lynn, our deacon, and all the faithful of St. James' House of Prayer. For the leaders of our nation and the world, particularly Donald, our president, and Joe, our president-elect. For all who celebrate special days this week, especially for the birthday of Sayana Glicksburg and the anniversary of Art and Mary Dunnigan. For all who are sick and all who suffer, especially those on our prayers list. And for all who have died, and for others who are on our hearts. Call us to yourself, O God, as you called Mary, that we may be formed into a dwelling of holiness, giving life to all peoples of the world, through Mary's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. 
and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in the eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please remember as we go through this week, first of all, to stay safe, and secondly, to uh, remember as you have opportunities uh, before and needing those who the most need to hear the good news and those who need to be able to receive God into their own lives. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where, with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the Church, and the author of our salvation, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Holy things for holy people, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and be 
you don't turn your hearts by faith yeah. the next day.
communion physically with us today, we say the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We continue with the post communion prayer of thanksgiving. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter all obstacles from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.